Okay, my outstanding friends, this is it. Today I am presenting my theory about dipole electron flood theory. This is Roger's model. <laughs> we got the Rutherford model, not correct. We got the Bohr model, way not correct. Now, I studied this stuff long ago, 1970. I wrote my paper that said these just aren't right. There is no such thing as a gigantic positive core and tiny, tiny, tiny little negatives floating around. It just didn't work. And this was not far from right, but you couldn't really justify anything. All he said was that all the mass was in the center and then there was little stuff floating around. It, it, it really didn't work because it couldn't account for secondary light, which now I think I can account for. it. It's almost like the string theory where we'll get deeper into this, but this is my model. My model says that this core is not a positive and it's not just a blank big mass of nothing. It is a ton of little dipoles and these were, what the, this is what an electron is. Right? There, Bohr shows an electron as just a tiny little negative. Well, it is that, and that white is the negative, but it also has the dark matter attached. I show this in my light research experiments over and over and over, and you will see it again very shortly. What ends up happening is the dark stuff collects in the center, and the white stuff doesn't want to be next to each other, so it surrounds it just exactly like like this. It's all it is is a magnet in the center and all of the electrons are on the outside. You see this? That's exactly the same thing. You see it? And that's because these are just not like little magnetic particles. That's another magnet. You see it? That's a magnet. It has all the white surrounding. You see this one? Same thing. <laughs> this, is a, this is a magnet from a motor. but. If I go this way with it, on the edges, you can see it. If I go this way, you can see it. Now, what happens to the core is this is the core of an of a atom. Let's say this is a hydrogen. This is what they call hydrogen 1, which means it only has one proton. Did you know that hydrogens can have 2, 3? I mean, it's hydrogen 1, 2, 3, deuterium, tritium. Anyway. We're talking about hydrogen 1. It has literally one proton is what they would call it. And I say that is the nucleus, which is the center, is nothing more than 1839 of these little dipole electrons. And the di this is what they are. They look just like that. And I can show them, and I will show them, and I have shown them a bazillion times. You got the black and you got the white attached. Now, when you get four of them together, like this, which is two of them basically attached, this one here, whoops, and that one there, it's like two little bar magnets. Basically that's all it is. And it has a field around it, it has a field around it. That's what creates the wave as it goes through the air. So as it moves through the air, the field that surrounds it makes a wave, but it's a particle. Because they know it's a particle and a wave and they just can't figure it out. Well that's what it, why it happens. And I show it. I can, I'm going to show it all this stuff. Not a thing that I'm saying I won't show. However, I can't really show you the nucleus, but I can demonstrate it right here. The nucleus is going to be, oh boy, hold on a second. Let me find my nucleus. You know, you don't want to lose your nucleus. Whoops, there we go. Whew, you lose your nucleus, you're in big trouble. All right, now, so what do we got here? We're not going to see that dark matter. Nobody's ever seen it. You know why? Because it's coated with electrons. <laughs> all the white ones surround all the black ones. The only time you see the black ones are when we did this light experiment showing the black ones attached to the white ones because we're way down into the light. This is a, an atom. All right, so which is this? Is, well, this is the core nucleus of a hydrogen, let's say. What's inside there? Well, here's what it is. Inside is that. That's the dark matter. Nobody's ever seen it before. 
It's all it could, because all of the white matter wants to attach to it. They want to be together, but the whites don't want to be next to each other, so they end up pushing each other to the outside, exactly as we saw. That's the magnetic situation, which all particles are magnetic in their nature. They are all electrostatic. That means magnetic. Now, this is the dipole electron flood theory model, and it just works perfect. It solves 100%. If you can come to me with anything that exists, why global warming happens, because that's not understood well either. The space is not a vacuum, totally not a vacuum. Hubble theory, has uh, Hubble's bubble has popped as far as I'm concerned. It, it is, it, light is slowing down as it comes to this. It's insanity to think it doesn't slow down. Oh, well, well, light doesn't slow down because uh, Einstein said so in a vacuum. Well, guess what? First of all, it does slow down. I don't care what it's in. And secondly, it, it, the, the space is just saturated with other particles, which it has to flow through. So we have no idea how far these things are from us. Absolutely none. You know, maybe close in range from us, but certainly not with these long distance galaxies. Oh, these galaxies are 4.7 light years away. No. That is all water over the dam. Okay, so why is Hubble in trouble? Well, here's why. Because light can speed up. That's the normal speed of light from a pulsed red laser, and it's obviously accelerating here. And light, which you obviously can see that. All right, so that means Einstein was not right, because light can also slow down, very obvious here. You see the blue light, how wide the intervals are here and how close they are up here. It's either slowing down or speeding up. <laughs> one or the other. This one's obviously speeding up. Now, what can we take away from this? Well, first of all, we can see the particles. And we can see them because we're using the exact same technology they're using to see cosmic ray detectors, which is a smartphone. That's all it is. Look it up. Smartphones used as cosmic ray detectors. Back to 19, I mean, uh, 2014. Anyway, um, this is what the particles of our light are. So, if they can speed up and slow down, Hubble's not correct. But he said, oh, no, no, it's a vacuum out there. There's nothing out there for it to bump into. Like hell there isn't. That's crazy. What do you think light is made of? I showed you they're made of particles. What do you, what's coming out of the sun? Nothing. Obviously, there's something coming out of the sun, and this leads to the fact that global warming is not understood. We're scrubbing against these particles that are coming from the sun. All right, like the thumbnail says, Hubble is in trouble. Evidence for anistopri cosmic acceleration. And then they come down to talk about the observed acceleration of the Hubble expansion rate has been attributed to a mysterious dark energy. Well, let me just go on to tell you they have no clue what they're talking about. Let me show you what is actually going on. These are those particles. Now, they come out of the sun, they hit a solar panel, and they knock an electron into conduction. Obviously, it's a particle. And obviously, we're sw spinning and swirling through that, just as the sun is. But the sun is also emitting them in copious quantities. Now, that is what electrons look like, one of these. Two of them together make a photon. That's all it is. Photons will bounce off of things and it will be re-emitted as a different frequency of light. You'll see it as colors. However, electrons, one of just by itself, will want to incorporate into something. That's why they normally fuse into water and blow things up. Now, this we just did exactly what CERN wants to see. It's the black ball muon, the white ball is the electron neutrino. And when they hit, they do this. I showed you just a second ago, these were attached together. Well, not anymore. And that is exactly what CERN wants to see. You're going to find this hard to believe, but it's true. This is not understood by mainstream science. They think there's nothing out here. Well, there is nothing but particles out here, because they just keep going. They don't just stop here. Well. What happens in space? We're, we're scrubbing through space, being pulled through the arm of the galaxy, following after the sun, spinning around in a circle, trailing and spinning around the sun, and we're interacting in every which way with the atmosphere, and it is an atmosphere, it's not nothing, it's an atmosphere of 
particles and we're scrubbing that's why it's 2700 degrees here and 100 on the surface the sun does exactly the same thing because it's being ripped through the Milky Way just as we are and out here it's millions of degrees out here 7,000 on the surface why the only reason is because it's push to shove through ripping ourselves through just like your tires scrubbing on a pavement or spinning same sort of thing and Venus is not spinning like rolling with the atmosphere it's spinning backwards but going in that direction it's 850 degrees on Venus that's why amazing amount of interaction because it rolls in reverse all right this is what you have to understand we are on the arm of the Milky Way I'll show you in a second we're being ripped through the solar or through the galaxy and the Sun is a mass which attracts all of the particles behind it which are our planets basically to the Sun they're just particles trying to catch up to it because it's dark matter is attractive so attractive that it pulls these particles to it we spin around the Sun as the Sun is being ripped forward you see that a little slush off the edge that's because it's spinning this way and being ripped into whatever's in front of it if it's dense it's dense if it's sparse it's sparse now let's take a look at the galaxy that we are being pulled through and we're scrubbing our atmosphere against whatever is here and that is not just nothing all right, you saw what I showed you a second ago. We're being ripped forward through the galaxy. Now, what is in front of us? Well, who knows? But if it's something dense, obviously we're going to have more impact. If it's something sparse, we're going to have less impact. But basically what's happening is the emissions from the sun hit a region outside of itself called a corona, and that's where that scrub zone was. Millions and millions of degrees, only 7,000 down here. That's why it's out here. They, don't, they can't explain that, and they just refuse to even discuss it. I want to have some people from these agencies and so forth on Zoom meetings. I want to interact. Nobody will discuss it with me because I have too much evidence against them. They can't talk about it. This is a reflective light, so it bounces off here. So what happens? It loses a lot of its energy. So we can only see moonlight, which is a, a, a dark light. A cool light they would call it because we're not going to get an impact of energy particles basically we're going to get a little bit of particles but certainly nothing like you're getting here immediately just like shooting you with the machine guns all day long and some of them spin real fast and some of them spin slow all right the slow ones are the red the fast ones are the blues and in between green yellow all that business now all of this is what we're spinning through so if Hubble's looking out here saying oh everything's just going away from us a bazillion miles an hour because that's the speed of light <laughs> no no the particles coming to us are hitting all this stuff so they're slowing down those things could be a hundred percent stationary we have no idea we look out and we see something way out here and it's oh that's a uh, 380 million light years away well pfft. How did they know that? I had no clue whatsoever. Because anything could be in between. So right now, Hubble's crazy. NASA got to start to understand, we're scrubbing through this atmosphere, our ionosphere. That's why it's 2,700 degrees out here. I see China is putting particles in the, in the air, it looks like to me. And all you're going to do is create more scrub. More scrub creates more energy into the envelope that surrounds our globe. And if you pump that up, just like pumping up a balloon, the pumper it gets, the scrubber it gets, the scrubber it gets, the hotter it gets. So just by putting particles in there thinking we're blocking the sun, it's just the opposite. We're going to attract more scrub. And the more, the more the, the envelope swells up, and 5G is not good either, I don't think. 5G, if you took a, a, a room and sealed it completely sealed and put a 5g broadcast tower in there and just turn it on would would it compress would it would it expand all of the molecules in the air in there that's what i would want to know because if it's doing that 5g is swelling our whole planet's envelope 
as well. There's a lot of things we have to take into account here. You can't just hide and run in the woods and hope and pray for the best because, I mean, I, could, I hope and pray for the best, trust me, but I realize that that's just not a solution in every case. And this is a case where it's not a solution. We, we have to look at these particles in a whole new way. Hubble's bubble is in big trouble.